Hey, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the introduction. Yeah, OK, before we start, I'm going to need some help from you during this presentation. You might not know what this is yet. I'll describe it later. But it's the most disgusting, vile thing you can think of. When I say this phrase, I want you to boo as loud as you can. Okay? The phrase today is glue code. Okay? Glue code. If you hear glue code, I want you to. Okay. This thing, it's disgusting. It's vile. It's the thing that wakes you up at 2 in the morning when things go wrong. Who likes being woken up at 2 in the morning when things? No, nobody. One more time. Glue code. Glue. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. I accept a little bit more as we get more people. We want security to get alerted. Like, why is this audience so hostile and booing Jeff? Okay, let's like trick people here. But anyway, my name's Jeff. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a senior technical product manager um, for the EventBridge team. And one of my focus areas is pipes. <clears throat> Who here can name five AWS services? Okay, some people, okay, okay. 10? 20? Oh, 20, okay. Can you get this guy a mic? I want him. No, I'm just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Okay, so AWS offers more than 200 different services. You can use these services, compose them together as building blocks to make a complete application. It lets you innovate faster because you can concentrate on what differentiates your application and not worry about that undifferentiated heavy lifting like provisioning infrastructure or running data centers. The services are incredibly powerful, and they enable you to use the right tool for the right job. When you assemble these building blocks together, you get a solution that's scalable, reliable, and resilient. And you can add more building blocks in as your needs evolve. So connecting these blocks together looks super easy. It's just a, it's just a line between the boxes. Here we're just passing events from one case of stream to another. For example, you might want to copy a subset of events from a massive, huge Kinesis stream to a smaller Kinesis stream so your consumers don't get overwhelmed. What you don't see here is to get this Kinesis data from one stream to the other. You need code. Get ready. Get ready. We call this code integration code or glue code. Okay. Because it's not doing anything differentiated. It's simply transferring events from one place to another. Now, glue code doesn't seem so bad well, until you get to writing it and maintaining it. For example, technologies have their own nuances. If you're going to be using Amazon Kinesis data streams, you need to understand the Kinesis client library. Okay? You need to understand shards. You need to understand sequence IDs so you can maintain the ordering. Let's say I want to switch to SQS for some reason. It's a totally different ballgame now. There's more error handling and retries, authentication, rate control. Performance testing, making sure that your function has the right memory allocation to handle your load. You have to worry about deployment. And then the favorite part, you have a little bug in your code that you didn't notice. You're getting woken up at 4 in the morning by the CEO to replace the production system. So I'd like to present EventBridge Pipes. It connects services together. On the left-hand side, you have a bunch of sources. The right-hand side, you have a bunch of targets. Easy peasy. But the cool thing about EventBridge is the stuff happening in the middle. It's completely optional, but it's really, really cool. So you have filtering. You can choose which events from the source get delivered to the target. And one neat thing about pipes is that you're only charged for the events that match the filter. In the demo I'm going to give you, I think the whole demo costs like 0 0.0008 cents or something like that. We have an enrich step. So enrichment simply means you have an event from the source. You need to add more data to it before you pass it on to the target. 
transformation. Maybe the source is delivering events that aren't in the format the target expects. You can use transformation to make it match what the target wants. You know what? I've done enough talking. Who wants to see a live demo? Yeah, OK. Just kidding. I haven't done enough talking. I need to explain what we're going to see in a bit. So on the left-hand side, oh, here, let me set a story for you. Imagine that you're working for a global, massive e-commerce giant. I don't know where you can get inspiration for that, but let's just say that's what you're working for. You have this giant Kinesis stream. Every time someone clicks on a website link, it gets put into this Kinesis stream. You try hooking up consumers to this Kinesis stream, things aren't working very well. They're getting completely overwhelmed. So what your idea is, instead of using this giant Kinesis stream, let's use a pipe to take events from the sales section of our website and put that into a teeny tiny Kinesis stream. Okay? <clears throat> then we'll hang the consumers off that. Let's get into the demo. And of course, my computer went to sleep because it's a live demo. And what can go wrong will go wrong. OK. <clears throat> oh, one more practice. Glue code. OK, OK. You're getting better, getting better. Still a little bit of work to do. OK, so let's start in by looking at some really, really fake clickstream data. Those in the back, can you read this? It's like, OK? OK. So what I got here is I actually have 500 records. And in, embedded inside these records are the two records I really want. You can see it highlighted here, the acme.com um, slash sale. Okay? So I got these two. Let's build a pipe that is going to filter these events into the consuming Kinesis stream. So here we go. I'm in my big click stream. I'm going to go to the event bridge pipes tab and just click connect. I'll give it a cool name. I don't know. Um, Qia click processor. I can't spell. It doesn't matter. For starting position, I'm just going to use trim horizon so I can do a little bit of less typing. I'm going to hit next. So I have a filter here. And again, I just, want to, I just want to filter things. Whoops, that is a bit of a mistake. I want to filter things that only contain that sales data. Luckily, I have my cheat sheet here. I'll paste it in, then I'll zoom in a bit so you can see what I'm doing. OK, now you definitely can't read that in the back. All I'm looking for here, you can see inside the data object, inside the page object, I'm looking for this prefix for acmecom.sale. Move on to the next step. Let me zoom out. Enrichment, we're just going to skip it for this one, but I am going to try to get two demos in here. Thanks for your time. You deserve two demos. For the target, I'm just going to do my small click stream. So here we go. Small click stream, just give it a random partition key, and let's create this pipe. So while that pipe is creating, I'm just going to go back into the console, and let's stick 500 records into this big Kinesis stream. That looks about right. OK, I got zero failed record count. Let's see what happened here. So I'll go back to my big Kinesis stream, my big click stream. And how am I doing for time? Oh, <laughs> right on time, uh, 1340. Let's see if I have any records here. Oh, it's in the future. OK, no problem, no problem. OK, 
Okay, so many, many records at 1339, no problem. Let's go to the small one. Let's see what happened over here. Go 1339 as well. Let's grab these records. Nothing, that's all right. Okay, nothing again. Talk amongst yourselves. It, it does take a minute sometimes for the initial pipe to start. Demo gods, don't fail me. It's okay. It's okay. Give me a minute. All right. Well, you know what? I'm not going to go for timestamp. I'm going to show you this. It's a little bit fake. You can see this is from yesterday because I can't, I'm in a lightning talk. I cannot wait for this thing to finish. I have two records here. Let me grab it. And just to prove to you that what we're seeing is what we get. I'm gonna cut, copy that, put it into my base 64 decoder. decode. And as we see, we have this sale website. And this is the time where you clap and give a big round of applause. Yeah. Okay. And you know what? I just, I just have this thing about me. I cannot, I just cannot let this go. Let's see if it actually came in now. 1339. Oh, demo gods, okay, fine, okay. This happened to me before, I'm gonna move on. Okay, 1338 might be the solution, okay. You know what, it was a good try. We'll try again at the end of the demo and see if this actually shows up. Okay, let me click another button. We'll go back to the slides. So again, going from kinesis to kinesis through a pipe with filtering. So now you deserve something a little bit crazier. So I'm going to go, again, working at this giant e-commerce company. But now I'm in the support organization, which is useful because my first demo didn't work so great. But that's OK. I'm in a support organization. I want to go from SQS. I'm going to have filtering again. But this time, what I need to do is in my SQS queue, I only have a ticket ID and a ticket status. The ticket itself is what my step function needs for processing. So I'm going to use this enrichment, which is actually going to reach out to Zendesk's API, feed it in the ticket ID, send me back the entire ticket, and then Pipes is going to transport that over to the step function. Cool, right? Cool. OK. Let me push this magic button again. And let's do this one. So I set up this pipe beforehand, the support ticket processor. And the important part on this one, I think, is the enrichment step, where I'm using the API destination. So let me show you what this API destination looks like. And I'm going to go into edit mode. OK. Wow, things are really, really slow with the reception. OK, I'm going to blame the internet. So what I've done here is I've just set an API destination in endpoint. You'll notice before this JSON, I have this star. OK? I'll explain exactly what the star is going to do in a minute. I'm just putting in get. I set an indication rate limit of 300. And for auth, I'm using the existing connection. All this connection has is my API key for Zendesk. Okay? Remember that star in that star.json. Okay, let me just cancel out of here and go into my pipe. I'll click on this. I'm going to go right to enrichment. And you know what? I'll go into edit mode just so you can see that there's no trickery and things are really easy. So the enrichment, 
what I'm doing here is I specified a path parameter. And you know what? It would be useful to see what the actual event looks like, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. This is what I'm going to feed into my SQS queue. I just have a type and a ticket ID. Back to my pipe. I'm feeding it in a path parameter, which will go into the body, ticket ID, and return that. And what's going to happen, it's going to substitute in that ticket ID for that star that we saw earlier. So for example, in my endpoint here, it'll be 1.json for ticket ID 1 or 21.json for ticket ID 21. Clear as mud? OK. Let's pop over to, and I didn't open Zendesk. Wow, this is um, boo glue code, but please don't boo my demo. So let me actually log into Zendesk here. And I got four minutes to spare. I'll make it. And I'll go to all tickets. The tickets that I want to see in my step function are the first one in open status, sample ticket, meet the ticket. And the ticket in solve status, your demo is broken. OK. Um, all right. All right. No problem. <clears throat> I'm going to do that with a filter like we saw earlier. So let me just go back to the filtering step. That is very, very small again. But quite simply, I'm looking for the type support ticket opened or support ticket resolved. Ready for me to fire this off? All right, let's do this. Yeah. The most exciting looking at cast code you've ever seen. Okay. It's gone into SQS with no failures. Let's go to our step function. And remember, we're expecting to see whole tickets in here, executions. I'm seeing two. This is good. Uh, let's pop one open and see what the input is. So the pipe indeed fed the step function. Oh, where are you? Where are you? And it's really big. Let me make it a little bit smaller. But you can see here in the input for the step function, I have my sample ticket, meet the ticket, which was the ticket in the new state, and then all the ticket information uh, that I got from Zendesk. And this is where you clap again. <laughs> cool. <clears throat> OK, so again, I've showed you we went from SQS to step functions with a filtering step and an API destination in the middle that enriched our event. So once again, AWS offers more than 200 different services. You can use these services together as building blocks. And Pipes helps you glue these building blocks together without any glue code. Thank you so much for the booze. What a way to end this presentation. My name's Jeff. Thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you again.